Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we can start with today's session. Praise God. We'll start with the prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have given us to study your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy that endures forever and ever. And Lord, as you are teaching us the truth, you reveal to us the hidden secrets from your word, Lord. And you give us the interpretation, you give us the revelation of your word that we may understand this truth, Lord Jesus. And not only understand this truth, Lord, but also we can apply the same truth in our day-to-day -day life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love, your mercy that endures forever and ever. And it is through your love, it is through your mercy that you are teaching us. And Lord, as we're studying your word, we have the hunger, we have the thirst for your word, Lord. And Lord, you continue to teach us the word. Lord, we only want to live for you and we are only want to know your word, Lord. We are never satisfied with what you are giving us. We want to know more and more and more about you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to gather here and study the word. And Lord, I bind every spirit of distraction, every spirit of disturbance, every spirit that is distracting us from studying your word. I uproot it, I curse it from the root, I bind it, and I cast it out into the depth of the sea in the name of Jesus, never to return back. Lord, we are anointed, we are blessed, we are protected only to study your word. And Lord, as we are studying your word, you confirm this word with signs, wonders, and practical examples that, Lord, we may understand this truth and not only understand this truth, but also we can apply this truth in our life. Thank you and praise you and glorify, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray above Father. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 10. Hallelujah. Mark 4, verse 10. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. So, so, you know, men, today we are going to see something that is very, very important because um, this is, our life can be based on this truth. Whether it is based on, you know, if I'm seeing miracles or not, Am I living a life for the word of God or not? I can only know it when I understand this truth. Praise God. So, so we see here, it is saying, when he was alone, they that were with him, with, with about with him, and with the twelve, the twelve and some others that were around, asked of him the parable. Okay. Now, if you see in the first verse, there, see here, and he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great, great, great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. So, so, Jesus was teaching, and the crowd 
it was such a big crowd it was not a small crowd it was a great multitude and this multitude was so great that the whole beach the whole coast was full that he had to go and sit in a boat and preach he did not have even space to stand on the beach okay that's why he went into the boat but if you see in the very 10th verse after jesus explained the parable only few asked of what this parable meant so there might be 100 people coming on the zoom but how many will go back and study yes yeah and see this 11th verse and he said unto them and to you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of god but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables so what is a mystery what is a mystery knowledge knowledge a mystery is knowledge okay okay anyone else what is a mystery come on don't you have mysteries you have to solve in your school and all right okay yeah shalomi wanted to say something you wanted to answer press card or anyone else okay a mystery a mystery is something that is hidden it is something that is secret and this mystery can is something that is hidden that can only be revealed to a certain people it's like there are some clues given and the mystery is hidden only those who understand the clue will understand the mystery and who are the ones who understand the clue the ones who sit and ask lord what if you if 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 this is working how did you do this if you love how did you do that lord what does this mean what does that mean when you sit and ask jesus and he will teach you he will guide you the holy spirit is given he is the one who will teach you and guide you and he is the one who is our teacher who is teaching us so if you read any other book outside the bible any worldly book it's all based on to understand that book it's all based on how much intelligent you are but when it comes to the word of god it's not based on how much intelligent you are but it's based on are you ready to ask the holy spirit what does the word of god mean that's what we see in john 14:26 and john 16 13 it is saying that the holy spirit is the one who will teach you and guide you into all truth if i don't have the holy spirit always remember no holy spirit no revelation press god because the holy spirit is the one who gives us the revelation press god so here we see it is saying all these things are done in parables a parable is a story where there is a mystery and this mystery can only be revealed when a person understands and asks lord what does this mean okay let's go let's study a mystery in the kingdom of god today which is very important and this this took a, I, i for me to understand it took some time and uh, it is very very you know it's a very secret okay that you can't understand normal normally Okay let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 2 So for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will make you free from the law of sin and death Is that what the scripture is saying Can you repeat Okay okay I'll read it again okay for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus will make you free from the law of sin and death no it is had made me free yeah it has made me free from the law of sin and death now here we see there are two kinds of laws 
law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death. Now, what is this law of sin and death? Okay, I'll show you one scripture. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 onwards. Okay, see this. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So who was this man? Man. Who is this Adam. man? Adam. So the Lord God took Adam and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it. Means to look after it, to keep it. Because this garden of Eden was created for man. And this garden of Eden was the on the face of the whole earth. Because that time, there were no roads, there were no cities, different parts. Only the garden of Eden. And in this garden of Eden, there were trees, different kinds of trees, animals, lakes, rivers, where animals live, seas, oceans. And it was a very, very quiet, peaceful planet. Okay. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So the Lord God commanded Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. You have, you have all, you can choose which one you want to eat at what time. You have all the different trees. But, but, there is one tree that you can't eat from. You can choose whether you want to eat from it or you don't want to eat from it, which is this tree, okay? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, this is what God said to Adam. You may choose whatever tree you want to eat in the garden, but one tree, that is tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it okay because if you eat of it you shall surely die now many people think this is the tree of you know it's an apple tree okay but actually this tree was not an ordinary tree it was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil where you can choose whether you want to live in the godly life righteous to him or do you want to take this choice and live in a sinful life your choice Okay, and now here he's saying, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, when God is saying this, you shall surely die. So that means when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, that very moment, they were, you know, when they took the bite of the fruit, they were dead on the ground. Right? Is that what the scripture says? Praise God. No. That was not true. This, what happened here is, of the day, we think, you know, many people think they ate the fruit, the very moment they ate the fruit, they died. No. I know many did not die. They died, not physically, but in the spirit. That does not mean they did not have a spirit. No. They had a spirit. They are a spirit. But, but, okay, now, when they ate the fruit, that death that came in the spirit was that they were disconnected from the father. For the first time, man was disconnected from the father. Because God never created man to be disconnected from God. He created man to live with God, okay, connected to God forever. But, but, because Adam and Eve committed sin, man committed sin. Now, the very moment they ate of the fruit, they were disconnected from God the spirit, through the spirit. And now, actually, before they ate the fruit, they were living a life where they are not governed by the flesh, but they are governed by the spirit of God. They had their physical senses, but they were not governed by their physical senses. They were governed by the spirit of God. But now, when they ate the fruit, 
they were disconnected from the father in the spirit and they were shifted to their physical senses and now they, because they were shifted to the physical senses now they were doing everything in a you know through their physical senses they were no longer governed by the spirit of god hallelujah okay and this is this is the law of sin and death which is mentioned in romans chapter 8 verse 2 let's go back there this is the law okay see this for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death now let's go to one scripture okay and we'll see this psalms Praise God. Eighty nine, verse number thirty four. Okay, now my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Now here we see the scripture is saying God will not break nor violate the word that He has spoken. So, so He will not violate. Now he will not break the word that he has spoken. Now, if God said, "If you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die," that became a law. That was the law of sin and death. Okay, and now since that was the law of sin and death, God could not violate, nor God could not break that word. because god is a faithful god if god is going to break that word that means he is no longer faithful god he cannot say okay i love man you ate the fruit but now i still love you that's why i'm going to give you one more chance he could not have said that or he could not have said oh you messed up with the power so let me take the dominion back because god already spoke the word and now since he spoke the word he could not violate that word Praise God, and now that became a law which God could not violate. So after Adam and Eve ate the fruit, now everyone that we see in the old covenant before Jesus died, they all were in sin, and they did not have any freedom of choice because they did not have a choice whether they want to live for a life for God. They had to live in sin. They could not say that they have to be. They want to be born again. because on their behalf adam had chosen for them it's like that on their behalf adam had chosen for them now they could not choose anymore but but now once because that's why we have more anointing than them because they did not have the freedom of choice they had to obey and they had to live in sin they could not say that they want to live a life holy life they had to live in sin but now that jesus came Now we are in the new covenant where everything is finished everything is done and since everything is done now now Jesus has given us the freedom of choice now we have the freedom of choice to choose whether we want to continue to live in sin we want to continue to live in sickness we want to continue to live in disease or we want to change we want to repent and we want to come to Christ and experience his glory the choice is ours whether we want to choose so in the old covenant okay the old covenant before jesus died they had to choose they were all come under the law of sin and death but now that because god could not break his word so what he did is he implemented a new law that was the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus and since he implemented this new law now we have the freedom of choice to choose whether we want to operate in the law of sin and death or we want to operate in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus it is our choice now and whether what we want to choose whether we want to choose the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death we can we can choose but we can't blame god for the consequences because it is we who are chosen and since it is we who are chosen the consequences are completely based on our choice and since the consequences are based on our choice 
we chose to live in sin we chose to live in sickness that's why we saw death death came because of sin praise god that's why god could not break his word that's why he implemented a new law otherwise if he would break his word now he's no longer faithful god now he's no longer just god now he's no longer a god who obeys his word praise god hallelujah okay let's go back to that psalm uh, sorry romans 8:2 for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death praise god hallelujah thank you jesus so 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 that means it was our choice now praise god okay okay now we see this new law that he implemented okay let's go to galatians chapter 3 was number um okay we'll go from 13 okay christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith now here we see the word of god is saying christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law now this curse of the law was what this curse was this scripture does not say christ has redeemed us from the curse of god's emotion it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law so the curse of the law is what because of the law of sin and death because of the law that god activated in the garden of eden that's why there came a curse on man may you know man human beings okay and this curse that came this curse came because that law got activated but what did jesus do jesus took this curse that came because of the law he took it on himself that's why you know if you see those stones stones okay what did god say in the beginning because you committed sin in genesis chapter 3 it says because you committed sin now the ground will no longer bear fruit but instead it will bear thorns you will have to work to get your food right so that thorns were representing what curse now jesus had a crown of thorns on his head and those thorns pierced through his brain through his head through his eyes and why did he take these thorns these thorns were representing the curse that came on man and that's why when he took that crown of thorns it was you know they hit a rod on the crown of thorns that it pierced inside and those stones were representing what those stones were representing the curse that came on man because of sin but here we see the scripture is saying christ not will has redeemed us from the curse of the law how did he do that he was made a curse for us for it is written curse is everyone that hangs on a tree it is written in the old testament in deuteronomy curse is everyone that hangs on a tree now 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 because he took that curse on himself now see the 14th verse part b that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the holy spirit through faith so this blessing that came blessing that was on abraham because abraham was living a very prosperous life he was living a very successful life and he was experiencing blessing now that blessing is come on us on the gentiles because we were all gentiles it is not that uh, you know because because 
you know many people think i'm a christian that's why i'm a, i'm a believer okay i believe in jesus that's why i don't have to be born again that's why i don't have to be born again that's an absolute lie because because uh, uh, we were all christians but even i was a christian but i never had relationship with christ we think that because we are christian that's why the blessings of abraham will come upon us we don't have to become born again i'm already born again and many people are falling into the deception okay baptism is born again no 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 today we are born again before we might be christians but we did not believe in christ jesus that's why we had to accept jesus as the lord god and savior but now now we have believed in jesus and now we have been become true christians true christians and now since we have become true christians if the blessing will come on the unbelievers on the gentiles who are just coming and repenting then what about the people who are already in the lord and already are born again and already are having a relationship with the lord how many much how much more blessing will come upon the gentiles uh, sorry the jews the people who already believe the ones who are already a true christian who already believe who are already building a relationship with christ who are already started preaching the word who are seeing manifestation miracles what about them they will see much more miracles blessings of abraham because they believe because they believe and the same blessing will come on us as well why because we accept jesus as the lord god and savior we believe in him that's why the same blessing will come upon us and since the same blessing is come and come upon us now we are no longer under curse we are no longer under curse but we are under blessing blessing of who blessing of abraham and how do we receive this blessings we receive this blessings through the promise of the holy spirit through the promise of the word of god by our faith Did you understand? Yes. Yes, no. Praise God. Thank you Jesus. Okay, let's come back to Romans chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Are you understanding? Praise God. And this 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 law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This law is not coming you know we are not seeing this law working in our life because of our works no 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 we can see this law working in our life because we believe in jesus that's what we we'll see in ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 let's go there see this for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god it is the gift of god now now this is the law of spirit of life in christ jesus where where we are experiencing god's grace by our faith and we have not done anything to work we have not done anything to qualify for it we have not done anything of ourselves but it is a gift a free gift from god it is something that is given to us because god loves us grace is given throughout love when a teacher is giving grace mark the teacher gives grace mark because she likes the student and she wants the student to pass in the same way god is giving us this grace because he did not want us to live in sin he loved us so much he came behind us because he wanted us to be living for him that's why he came he loved us so much he gave us this grace which is a free gift of god something that is given to us how freely 
That's what the ninth verse is saying. Not of works, lest any man should boast. I cannot boast of my works. I, I did this, I did that. I can't say I came and preached. That's why I will experience grace, no? Even when I'm preaching here, it is the grace of God that has given me this ability. It's not my ability, it's God's ability, God's grace. That's why grace is what? Grace is God's willingness to use His power, His ability, His authority on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. Okay, see the 10th verse. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk there, walk in them. Praise God. So that means now we are created by Him and created by Him not to live in sin, but to live under the grace of God. I'll repeat it once again. We are created by God, and God never created Adam to live in sin. God never created man to live in sin, but God created man Adam. God created man to live under the grace of God. Now, doing works is not wrong. God is clearly saying here, which God has ordained that you should walk in them. You should walk in good works. It's not wrong. But I'm doing those good works because I have the grace of God. I understood the grace of God. And this grace of God is making me do good works. Because I love God so much, these works which I'm doing are to show God that I love you, Lord, and I want to know more about you. I want to live a life only for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Are you all understanding? Yes, 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 we are understanding. Yeah? Isn't this an amazing truth? Okay, you know, can you put the verse? You are there. Can you put that? Oh, one minute. Yeah. I Take your time. See that you can put. I did not open. One minute. Okay, okay, tell uh, you can send a private message, then I'll stop my share. Press God. Hallelujah. God. Um, Romans 8 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will make me free. No, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Praise God. And see the fourth verse. See the fourth verse. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, see the next verse. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. The people who are operating in the law of sin and death, they are after the flesh and they are minding, they are only focused on the things of the flesh. But those who are operating in the law spirit of life in Christ Jesus, they are only focused on the spirit, the unseen world. And now that's why they are experiencing healing. That's why they are experiencing deliverance. That's why they are experiencing blessing because they are operating in the new law that is the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And this law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus is only given to the one in the new covenant. If anyone is saying I'm keeping the law, if anyone is saying I'm keeping the law, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm obeying the law, that's why I'm righteous to God, that person is still operating in the law of sin and death. That means he, that himself is a sin if he says, I did, did not commit a single sin. Yeah, he is the biggest sinner. That Thank itself God. is a sin. Yeah, he is. Exactly. Press God. Okay, we'll see one old scripture, which we have seen many a times, but we'll see again, okay? Romans 6.16. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Romans 6, 16. You know, can you put that verse? So yes. Yeah, okay. One minute. Yeah. Praise God. Six sixteen. One minute. Yeah. Sixteen. When we this is going. Press card. Okay, can you make it a bit bigger, you know? Yeah, because then on the YouTube, after on the mobile, they come very small. Okay, yeah. Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin and to death, or of obedience unto righteousness. So here again, we see the two laws. One is the law of sin and death, sin unto death, and the obedience unto righteousness, that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And this scripture is very clearly saying, to whom you obey, whether it is the law of sin and death, or law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which one you obey, that is the law that will govern your life, that will become the master and you will become a servant to it. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why, uh, uh, you know, if you see an aeroplane, okay, isn't there a law of gravity? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Now, now, if I say in UK, you know, what happens is when you throw an object, it will not go down, it will fly up. It will go up and up and up and it will fly. No. So, you know, you're saying no, so you don't believe me? No. no? So then your laptop must be going flying. Pardon? Then your laptop, you and must be going flying. So if you only throw it up, then it will stay there only. It will not come down. No. No? No. I'm, I'm saying if you throw it up, it will go higher and higher and higher. It will even go up till the moon. Will you believe? No. <laughs> So you're saying you are ready to believe the law of gravity, but you are not ready to believe my words, correct? Yes. Yeah. That's equivalent to that, right? You are ready to believe the law of gravity, but you are not ready to believe my words. But, but, then if there is a law of gravity, then how can the aeroplane fly? It must be magic. Right? The aeroplane has a different law. Call the just and lift. So you're not ready to say that it's magic that the aeroplane can fly high? No. Okay, you're saying it's a, another law. Yeah. There is a law of thrust and lift. Okay. And this law, what happens is, uh, have you ever seen hurricane, storm, tsunamis? Yeah. I did not yeah. see that I have heard. Yeah, you might have not seen, but you have heard tsunamis. Tsunamis. tsunamis are, yes. Yeah, tsunamis are basically when the whole land gets flooded. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. A big wave. Big my wave. Ma mother's mother experience. My mother and my mother's mother. Yeah, your grandmother. Praise God. Yeah. So, so, yeah, 
there are a lot of hurricanes, storms, even earthquakes, right? Yeah. Yes. Hurricanes. If you see hurricanes, tornadoes, they can even take a whole building up, a whole, you know, they can collapse the whole building. They can take cars up, right? What? Yeah. What yes. Cars up. Pardon? A tiny no. Yeah, the car. Yeah, even even people, even the cars, it can fly up. Uh, I know that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So why is it that? Why? How can they fly? Because of the law of thrust and lift, the pressure that is built against that, you know, that car or that object, it's lifting it up, right? Yes. In the same way, when an aeroplane is on the runway and the aeroplane is putting its full pressure because it's going at such speed, because it's on a full pressure, because if it's going to go very slowly, it will never be able to fly. Even if it tries to fly, it will fall back down. So it has to build up much speed so fast speed that now the pressure is so quick. Have you ever seen when you're driving in a car, okay, on a on a road, and you're going not that fast, but you're going, and if you turn the window on the the back window on of the car, what happens? You can, can feel all the flowing, right? Yeah. What? If you're driving in a car, okay, and you're you're sitting at the back, and uh, it you're driving on a road or a motorway a highway okay what oh. will happen what will happen if you put the window window on open if you open the window what will happen the whole breeze will come in correct yes yeah. if you're going at such speed on the road on the road on the highway the car is going at such speed that that wind is so blowing your face right yes yeah and if you put your hand out it will be so 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 breeze the wind will come right Yes, we will be like this. Yeah, your eyes will be closing because of the wind. Yeah, that has happened here also. So what happens? You know, it's so much pressure in the same way when a flight is going at extreme speed. Now that pressure that is coming against, just like how it will come against your face, how it's coming against the aeroplane. Now it lifts the aeroplane up, and now when it lifts the aeroplane up, there are wings, the engines that keep the aeroplane up. Yes? yes. Yes. If you see some aeroplanes, okay, uh, they don't have engines. Okay, they don't have engines. What happens is a vehicle has to pull them along the runway and build up speed that they will fly and they will take off. And what happens is they only glide on the wind. Have you seen those kind of planes? They, they they're only. Okay. They're only what? Glide, glide. They, they are completely on the wind. They have no engine and all. They just fly on the wind. If you see. Oh. And when they are landing, they have to be very stable. Otherwise, if they don't land on the first time, they can't go back up. Because there is no engine. Why? Because that wind that is lifting the aeroplane up is so much. that now the engines keep it in the air. Or it just fly, flies on the air. Correct? Yes. Yes, like, like a parachute. Basically like a parachute. It will glide. Ah. Yeah, like that. There are some planes which don't have engines. So, 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 what I'm trying to say is, how can the aeroplane fly? It's not that the gravity stops. Otherwise, one plane is flying, the whole world will be flying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. One, one small aeroplane is flying in the sky, the whole earth will be flying. Every country, every city, every town, every village will be flying. <laughs> no. Yes. yes. Yeah. But because there is gravity, the aeroplane is operating in another law that is the law of crash and lift that is supervising the law of gravity and that's why the aeroplane can fly. Right? Yes. Yes. In the same way, the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus supersedes the law of spirit and death. Now, if you see, uh, when, when I'm explaining the stress and lift, the pressure, if you see, I don't know about India, but here when you're driving in the car, Okay, and there is something called motorways here. So when you're driving, they go at extreme speed, extreme speed. Okay, and when you're driving, what is? Can you repeat that? You know, here in UK, okay, I don't know about India and other places, but here in UK, there is something called motorways. Mm -hmm. And on the motorways, 
the cars are just just so fast they might be like 120 130 kilometers okay so so what happens you know if if, if you open the window so much pressure it will pull you you know it will pull, push you back oh. okay yeah that's strong the wind is okay so in the same way you know and and it's so you know that the cars are just so fast the pressure the the wind is so strong and in the same way that's how the law of thrust and lift works the pressure that is built against the aeroplane it's designed in such a way that it will you know the wings they will glide on the wind and the engines will keep it up yes yeah praise god and praise that's god. how the law of thrust and lift supersedes the law of gravity so what do you mean by the word supersede can you repeat what do you mean by the word supersede superseding to means overtake yeah it means overtake overpower praise god so so yeah, and, and you know what? Have you ever done? I'll give you one more example to explain this law of thrust and lift. Have you seen when you are running? Okay, you know, after when you okay, if, if you have run for like five minutes continuously, you ran okay, huh. and, huh. and after you stop, what will happen? We will be sweating. sweating I will be sweating. Right? Yes, if you yes. will feel so hot. Sweating. But then after you're so hot and again you run, what will happen now? Will you feel sweating or will the wind come? Will the it wind. Go? Yeah? The wind will come. Yeah. Because when you stop, you're feeling so hot. But if you again run, you will feel so cold, the wind. You know, because you're running in such a speed, not that fast, but you're running, the speed is so strong that the wind is coming against you. And that's what cools you down and you feel so relaxed. Right? So when you stop again, you're so exhausted. Correct? Yes. That's how, lift works. That's how it works. It happened to me. Can I share another example of that? Yeah. So when we... When... When uh, the uh, current gone, I... This is before, okay? When the current gone, I gone and... Did my scooter outside? Then, first after five rounds, I was sweating, sweating, sweating. Then next five rounds, I the cool breeze was coming. Yeah, yeah. Even if you ride your bike, bicycle, you will feel your. You know when you go, yes. go very fast, too much speed. You know here, if you go very fast, you feel so nice, so nice. I was riding my bicycle with my. With my cousin, brother, so yeah. when we were moving, we were in a such a speed that we did not know that what car was coming behind. Wow, praise God. Okay, yeah, yes. Okay, let's come back. Let's come back. So why I gave this example was, why I gave this example is because, come back to Romans 8 too, you know. So, you know, there is some kind of disturbance. I'll just mute you. If you want to say something, you can unmute. Okay, praise God. I'll close the door. Yeah, okay. So, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So, Paul is saying this. Now, when a person is operating in the law of spirit of life in Christ, Jesus, now... When he's operating in this new law, the you know the law of sin and death is still active, but he is operating in another law. That's why there is no more sickness. That's why he's experiencing healing. He's experiencing deliverance. The the people who are operating in the law of sin and death, they are experiencing sickness, curse, uh, poverty, lack, all those things. Okay, danger. But a person who's operating in the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus, he's operating in healing. He's operating in blessing. He is operating in deliverance. Praise God. Are you understanding? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you understanding? Any doubts? Any questions?
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why we always take this example of John G. Lake. Okay, this, uh, this John G. Lake, okay. Uh, John G. Lake was, uh, uh, you know, a man. Okay, a man. And John G. Lake was a, a, a person who was preaching the word. He was rooted in the word and he was preaching the word. So what happened is, uh, when he was preaching the word, okay. So when he was preaching the word of God and teaching the word, he was very rooted in the word and he had healing rooms, okay. Where there would be people and they would just get healed. And what he would do is, he would send people out on missions to go and heal the sick. And send, and, and he will send out the, you know, he will go send them out so that now when they're going out, they cannot return back. They have to, the people have to be healed. Only once they heal, they can return back. That was how much faith was operating. Okay. Now, now, when this happened, uh, you, you know, John G. Lake was really strong in the word. And, you know, they saw, the government saw that the healings that were happening with John G. Lake were more than the healings that used to happen with the medical field, in the medical field. It was more. So what they did is they gave John G. Lake medical license to test medicine. But John G. Lake is not that dedicated. Okay. So in, he used to not make medicine, but instead he used to be in the hospital and he used to heal through Jesus. And now, you know, they used to get, you know, the doctors used to get very irritated and very offended with him and very angry, okay, because he would do the healings, he would not use the proper equipment, and they used to say, you, that's why you should not give medical license to those who are not educated, because they don't know what equipment to use. So when this happened, he continued to do the healing, and then John Chile heard about this, and he said, go and bring, go and bring the saliva. And they tested it under the microscope and you could, you know, because there was the saliva plague at that time that was spread, just like how we have virus now, they, they had a saliva plague where it was a, a sickness that spreads through saliva. And it was very contagious and very strong. Now, as you see, if you see, what happened was, he said, he bring the saliva and it was tested under the microscope and you could see the germs alive. And he touched it with his bare hand and then he said, check it again under the microscope. And they witnessed that all the germs were dead. Not even one single germ was alive. Why? John Gillette operating in the law hospital life in Christ Jesus. The other doctors operating in the law of sin and death. Praise God. That's why when a person is operating in the law of sin and death, sickness, when a person is operating in the law of sin and death, there is sickness. <laughs> Poverty, lack, all that. But a person who is operating in the law, spirit of life in Christ Jesus, healing, blessing, deliverance, protection, prosperity, success, salvation. Praise God. Praise God. Did you understand? Yes. Yes. Any doubts? Any questions? Did you do you have any doubts? Any doubts? It's it was clear. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Diarrhea did not come today. What is? Diarrhea. Diarrhea, no. There were... Diarrhea did not come today, no. Because, but there were is he, because he said he wanted to share testimony that day. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he wanted to share. Okay, if he comes Monday or Tuesday, I'll give him a chance to share. No problem. Praise God. Okay, there were some children that had come, but they left again. They left after. Praise God. Okay, anyone has any testimonies? Shaili, Ritanti, Enoch? Only three of you are there today. So, do you have any testimonies? I don't have any testimony. Okay, I have one testimony, okay. Yeah, Rita Auntie, do you have any testimony? Yes, I yes, have no worries. You can go first. I okay, okay. So my testimony is that uh my dad, my dad, where he was working, okay, he had got this job supernaturally, and now when he was where he was working, you know, he did not have much time uh, with us because he was doing Monday evening, Tuesday evening, then Wednesday he will be 
doing in the morning come home from break again he will do so he was working for a lot of time okay and he did not have that much time at home okay or to make prayer or to do like that because he was most of the time at work so what we did is we you know my mom and me me came into agreement on friday okay and we agreed we came into agreement saying my dad's timings were all normal how we needed it to be and we saw that the very next day on saturday okay that was yesterday all the timings were set all the timings were set how we needed it to be it was set he is you know he is home morning monday morning tuesday wednesday okay only few days he has to go to work otherwise most of the time he will be at home praise god and that's amazing and you know on saturdays i will have sessions and uh, before in the lockdown we used to my dad used to be at home when i used to have the other session so we used to, he used to listen but now he has to go to work so uh, 9 o'clock he will go to work so he will not get to listen to the teachings but now praise god he is at home on saturdays and he can get to listen to the word praise god so thank thank you jesus for that praise the lord praise god praise hallelujah praise the moment we pray the very next day he got the you know the you know he got everything how he wanted praise god praise god Yes, that's how it goes. The work of God, isn't it? When we believe, praise God. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, you know, have a testimony, or I can share it. Hmm. You can go ahead with that. Okay. Oh, then I will say. Let... Sorry, you know. You can go. Then I will say. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, I got like a three testimony. So the one testimony was like you know uh, my own brother-in-law. He was on the ship, so he's in, he used to be on ship in America. So his visa, American visa, is gonna like expired, and then they applied like you know it's expired on the in the month of September. So he uh, he told me to pray for him, and I gave him the scripture too to pray. So we both were praying. Look for eighteen, nineteen. What I gave the scripture, and just I told him to give thanks that it's done. So instead of uh, the the visa expiry was in September, the visa came three months before with the five five years visa. So all glory to God. Like you know, instead of uh, waiting it for long, but the visa came earlier as soon as they put it. So that's the first. And the second, then they said they have to stamp it on the uh, passport. Yeah, so they signed the passport within eight days. The passport came with the visa. So he is just waiting for a call, and we believe that God has blessed him with the call, and he is working on the ship again. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Praise yeah. God. This is what this testimony. Uh, he prays and he thanks God and was uh, confessing Luke four eighteen nineteen behalf of the company and the. Like visa and all, praise God. The second testimony was another lady. I I I already shared with you, like you know, she had a miscarriage and the baby was not you know proper. She was not matured and all this. Uh, but the miscarriage was it's not it's not done. It's self is happened. But you know, she was after having that, she was in depression. Uh, she was yeah. uh, like you know, um, every time she was uh like you know uh she was afraid and all this. Symptoms of the depression. So every step by step, I gave her courage with the word of God, and uh, then the doctor said that she got a cut in her chest, in a, near the heart. Yeah, and they have to she has to go through with the heart uh, operation. So they went for testing, then of uh, 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 X rays and all. All the procedure was done, so it was normal. So I gave the scripture. I told her one Peter two twenty four and active and exchange did the agreement prayer. <clears throat> so everything, and then again in two weeks' time, she has to go back to the hospital to check her chest because she in the middle she stopped like you know she got a tight chest like you know to breathe no she couldn't breathe normally. So I prayed and gave this picture, and because of that all the symptoms the cause and all, uh, the doctor advised her that to come in the two weeks. 
so praise god she is totally completely healed nothing in her chest so everything is blessed and she said thank you sister for like you know giving the word giving her courage every step by step so she sent me the message like three days before saying it all my reports are normal praise god Yes. So and she's out of depression because I gave I send them uh, because I I uh, I did a broadcast so you know I can add how many people like two twenty five something I can add it so you know Melbourne teaching every day I'm sending them word of God uh, then gospel whatever I can't get yeah so you know every then child is recording so everything I'm just sending them in Konkani recording as well so you know with that. a uh, lot of uh, like friends and like whoever is in the group they just thank you sister for the word after listening the word we are getting encouraged yeah and everyone is getting blessed so all glory to god for that and the third testimony uh, i gave the uh, testimony yeah, the ashwin filled me and then the, the same night like you know uh, night uh sunday last sunday night i he was sleeping so i left him and i put him brought him from downstairs to upstairs to put him on the bed so again my shoulder got little bit cracked like you know pain so in the morning i couldn't do anything like you know when i woke up and i have to go for work i have to drop the children because their dad uh, goes early for the shift and you know that time i was in terrible pain severe pain i couldn't do what to do like you know and that class was on and after praying like you know when the class stopped i don't want to disturb because all the children have to go to school mostly whoever attends this, then i call uh, Ash, uh, brother ashley alison like first i call alison mom she was uh, at work so she didn't answer so i call uh, brother ashley his, his dad and i just told alison alison we come every minute about it and then you know because i couldn't even pray it was so terrible and i have to rush to drop them school and everything it was so like you know uh then uh alison prayed yeah he we came in agreement for the prayer that time i feel really relaxed like you know it feels like my one side was like pulling my shoulder was really dislocated what i was feeling that time and even when i went to the then i dropped my children and that time i feel better when alison prayed and i said alison i will keep on confessing the scripture and uh, yes i will i was just doing the praising and uh, some 2214 and 1 peter to 2421 exchange i was just doing everything that day on monday and then i went to the doctor and in the emergency hospital and the doctor said uh, he examined me and he said uh, you got a dislocated uh, arm and i said now what you have to do shoulder yeah and i i asked him what you have to do now they said you have to fix the shoulder i said okay then i went to the do the x ray they sent me to do the x ray and when the x ray was taking uh, the re- doctor report was just coming in my mind saying it oh now your arm was dislocated and i was confessing the scripture some 22 14 and i was saying jesus your arm was dislocated so i believe that my hand is co- my shoulder is complete completely healed and then you know they took my x ray and everything done and i came back to the doctor to examine back and the same doctor said there is no injuries no dislocated everything is here. like you know there is nothing only he said maybe the ligament get stretched so that's why there is a severe pain so you know i can say in the morning when elison start praying it was the manifestation it started already to become and then when the doctor said that you know uh, the report was dislocated but when i confess i keep on confessing i didn't stop yeah everything praise praying in song both scriptures thanksgiving and all so all glory to god and i didn't have to go any surgery or nothing but with the word of god i'm completely healed thank you jesus for that so thank you alison for the prayer yes and even yes. after that uh, sister uh, uh, alison mom called me when she was free and even we came in agreement and sister sister that we won't we believe that there is no everything is normal like ligaments tendons everything and it's nothing the reports are normal praise god all glory to god praise god yeah all glory to god yes alison yeah praise you know god. you can go forward now yes and there is one more testimony like you know uh, in in goa in in uh, uh, in uk only they are goan people they were having the uh, like they want to buy a shop like you know not buy rent the shop so they had a shop the fish shop first 
and then some the the partner was not right like you know they was arguing so they left that one and then they took another shop so i got declined from the helpline but somebody else sent me uh, forwarded me yeah and then she said the sister can you take over i said okay and they want to speak in konkani i said okay i will do that and then uh, i just told them like you know and they pay they paid the deposit for that shop and then they don't want to give this shop to these people because the ex partner told not to give yeah and this is what was the issue was they wasn't giving uh, even it paid the deposit and all and then i prayed and i told them to forgive that person like you know ex partner because he was so rude and all this and then, uh, then i gave the look for it in 1999 came and i remained i told her like you know to take the things them up for all the basic uh, uh, scriptures and yes and then we believe like they gave they got that shop yeah what they want to do it one what they want to do it like you know they want that uh, the the um, owner agreed to give them the shop so all glory to god for that praise god praise god yes it, praise god yes that's what this you know i think we have one praise god all glory to god all my praise thank you to you no i don't remember it Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Okay, anyone no one else is there. Okay, praise God. Okay, so we can close this session with a prayer. Does anyone want to do the ending prayer? Shyly, Enoch. Anyone want to do the ending prayer? Shyly, do you want to do? Tanti, do you want to do the ending prayer? Praise God. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, we praise you. We love you. We adore you. We glorify you. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We love you. We adore you. We glorify you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, God. We praise you. We love you. We adore you. We glorify you. We thank you. Thank you for the lovely teaching you have speaking out from Alison's mouth, and every day. that we are receiving the word of god even in the morning jesus because we are blessed we are anointed to have a listen in our a listen in our life yes jesus we believe all the children over the world when they hear when they hear all this testimony is word of god we believe they are a mighty warrior in your in your things and jesus we believe that every second of our life our children our family and our household and generations to come are blessed and anointed We believe Jesus. Some uh, uh, John ten ten say when we when we we believe Jesus when we worship you as the Lord God and Savior, you come in our life to give life, life in abundance. And we believe Jesus. We come every second when we go away from you, and you are always with us, Jesus, to show us the correction, Holy Spirit, God. And we believe that we are all together wherever we go down. or whatever but you you have chosen every warrior to pull up us that what is the great courage a encouragement for each and every one of our father jesus and holy spirit to bless us this opportunity to have to the and the whole world to be anointed and blessed children of god we believe we pray in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen 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 jesus name amen Amen. Praise God. Yes, we can pray in tongues. O Karaba Kala Karaba Hishi Karaba Hakala. O Kuruba Kala Karaba Shi Karaba Hakala Karaba Hakala Kar.